Afternoon, tubers. There's a 99 Buick LeSabre here. Uh, just showing you, giving you a little rundown of what I went through. Uh, it's got 180,000 miles on it now, and uh, I pretty much had to order, you know, some parts, and I uh, some I got local. Uh, was able to get a brand new battery, AC Delco. There, I always put the install date, you know, of, of when you got it. Pretty much with with every and any part. Uh, last week I just did the uh, coil packs. I just bought three three coil packs there. Uh, got them from Amazon. They're only like 27 bucks a piece. The AC Delcos, uh, the DC 555s, and uh, they come off real easy. It's just this one right here. Uh, I believe it's a 7:30 seconds bolt. It's a it's probably one of the only American bolts you'll find on here. Is actually these. Everything else is uh, pretty damn well metric. So. Uh, Obviously these you don't have to really take off the negative terminal for, you know, but uh, there's just two little terminals in there, positive and negative, uh, actually between here, and then, uh, you know, just get like a wire brush because those terminals are going to be pretty corroded. Just pretty much, uh, the new ones aren't going to have the numbers on them, so you pretty much better do that so you don't, you don't want to crossfire any of these by accident there. I just put on some new wires there about a week ago, got them from the Auto Advanced Auto there. Uh, brand new plugs too as a matter of fact just change the oil and if you ever have a where the engine is actually uh, stalling on you cutting out for no reason or any stupid crap and then you hear some funny weird air noise that's coming from the air cleaner and it's driving you crazy uh, save yourself a lot of money look no further get yourself a new pressure uh, <coughs> fuel regulator it comes out with a special needle nose here and you'll have to before you do that I highly recommend taking the, the negative terminal off and depressurizing your fuel from the Schrader valve here you can usually do it when the engine's cool to cold so you don't want to get no gas on the hot exhaust not even a drop and then uh, and then basically just get a little uh, screwdriver in a bottle, you know, can just squirt it right in there, you know, pretty easy. But what happens, when these go bad, you're actually going to start dripping fuel in through this vacuum, and it's going to send it right back into the throttle position, uh, I mean, uh, the, the TPI, the throttle body area, and it's going to go in there and, and foul you right out, overly rich. Uh, if, it, if it gets real bad, this you can actually get vapors in there too, and it'll actually blow up your upper plenum, your upper intake manifold. It'll blow it right up, and it'll start an instant, immediate fire. Uh, guaranteed uh, and also here I'm, I was at the 180,000 pretty much so uh, I just I got a new map sensor that was about 160 or so dollars there I always clean the other one too you know it's a very special cleaner you have to use let it dry half hour before you even put it back in the vehicle uh, and then here I got the new uh, idle control unit there got a brand new one there so an amazing amount of gunk was inside of there and then the throttle position sensor you'll see there too you know uh, they all got those special torques and nothing with the security bit on them, so you got to go to the store and get yourself a set of those, you know, a couple of dollars, big deal, you know. And then uh, got a new thermostat, got a 185 in there, and then I got the uh, outdoor air char charge temperature sensor, I got that. I have a gasket for here, so I'm going to work on that. And then now, uh, I just pressure washed my engine, actually, uh, yesterday, as you see, so there's no, there's no grease and grime or anything, you know. And uh, I have a brand new uh, coolant temperature sensor. I'll have to change it right there, actually. So uh, I'll replace this, too. I just got some new ones for here. And then I was looking, trying to find my where my oil leak was uh, coming from. It looks like it's uh, looks like it's coming from right right there. I don't know if you, can, you really can't see it, but it's kind of a little shiny in there. But I cleaned the engine as, uh, as good as I humanly could there uh, to see where if and where there's anything leaking I'd be able to find any fresh leaks so yeah, it looks like it's coming from the upper plenum gasket getting a little oil leak and it looks like it's working its way down you know uh, to the uh, hot exhaust or something so uh, pretty much it three spark plugs in the back are a little tricky but uh, as I showed you in my previous video I actually got to remove this you can remove the fuel rail uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing there you know I'm going to do this in probably about a month uh, get just getting everything ready ahead of time, but you can re remove it while it's still charged. You can just hang it up and uh, hook it up on a wire, so it's you don't have to depressurize everything if you don't want to. The kit comes with new O-rings and all that. So, but what I did a couple of weeks ago, I took the throttle body away from the plenum because I had a bad gasket. The orange one had failed, so uh, it was leaking coolant into the the unit, so I had to ch into the engine oil, so I had to change it and it fouled out some plugs. So, got to get it before you hydro lock your engine, then you're jack screwed. So, and you have to take all your plugs out and, and suck out all the water with a shop vac or something. 
or just start it several times so all the water flies out. So there's three, uh, I think there's 10 millimeter bolts, possibly eight, eight or 10, not sure offhand, but there's a, there's three of them there. Then you've got a little bracket right here that's kind of a pain in the butt. You kind of got to remove that. And uh, there's, there's, a, there's a nut there. I forgot, I think it's like maybe six or seven millimeter, maybe eight, I'm not sure. Then there's one on the bottom that you really can't get to. So what I do is I just uh, take this one out and then just bend this over, bend it over out of the way. It'll, it'll move, it'll swivel that way for you. So, uh, and it's an amazing amount of junk when I removed this throttle body and behind that plate there was an incredible amount of carbon in there. So I spent the better part of an hour actually cleaning the, the back side of this throttle body. So it was just incredible. So when I go to remove this, obviously you want to move, remove it all at, one, all at once there. Uh, the next thing I'm probably going to do today because it's not very uh, cold out, it's not bad, is... Uh, you see, I pressure washed everything, so it's nice and nice and clean. But my serpentine belt is uh, getting getting ready. It's getting due, so uh, you'll just have to get a 15 millimeter nut on here. And obviously, mine has the one with the uh, motor mount right there, as usual. Wouldn't have it any other way. But uh, since I don't know why all the other mechanics te have a tendency to do all their work at night or uh, in a garage where you don't have any natural daylight. As you can see here, you can see that that two inch spacer clear as clear as day. And it's totally different from the actual mount. This is the mount right here. This is a, uh, probably a 15 millimeter nut that you can loosen a little bit. I wouldn't remove it, but you can loosen it. And then uh, there is, in fact, a big bolt that's on the other side of here. Let's see if I can, right, right on the other side of there, you can usually turn your wheel to the right and there's a, a little black cover you can remove in the fender well to get you a straight shot there because it, it is rather difficult to get at. But that, from what they tell me, is an 18 millimeter nut and then you use that reverse uh, inverted Torx bit. I believe it's an E10 Torx bit. So, uh, so other than that, you can see and uh, I also got new uh, elbows here, so when I go to remove the lower intake manifold, I'll be able to, uh, you know, I'll be able to put new ones in there. Uh, I bought a brand new uh, alternator last uh, summer. There you see, I put a date on everything, 8 27 12. Uh, this is broken, so those little things, it was cold out and it broke on me, so I got a new part, just going to replace that. Uh, I got a couple of them actually, so uh, it's better than the previous one. So, uh, and also, as you see, everything's all super clean there, so when it's ready for the job, you always want to pressure wash before you're going to do a job like that, uh, so you don't run into any problems, but I'm sure when I take the lower intel, intake manifold, there's a couple hidden bolts there, and there's some brackets, the alternator brackets will have to go, definitely remove the, the negative on there for sure, but, uh, but other than that, I, I just don't know why uh, GM had the bright idea of running the, the cooler through the idler, idler pulley, you know, to the, for the heater core. Just uh, really ridiculous. And uh, I believe there's a bolt holding that in there. Probably in, not, maybe not this one. Well, maybe. Should be. If not, then there's one on, on the other one because there's two of those actually. So, so, I mean, it runs great, runs like a champ, but I just got to catch it before I don't want to hydro lock the engine or anything, you know, if that gasket decides to really crap out on me. And I was getting a little bit of antifreeze into the oil, so I had to change that immediately, because that will destroy your engine for sure. And uh, I just took off that stupid plate thing, that stupid cover that was hiding those things, and I pressure washed that really good. I was getting some, um, some exhaust uh, oil on there, it was kind of burning, kind of stinking. So I got a new engine uh, temperature, coolant temperature sensor, so I got to do that. That's actually a bleeder valve. I didn't really know what the hell that was, but I did find out it's a bleeder valve to get rid of all the air after you've drained it. You know, obviously you have to do the upper and lower gaskets. You're going to have to drain your oil and uh, flush your uh, antifreeze and uh, get new antifreeze. You don't have any contaminants in there. Uh, the injectors will get the new O-rings that come with the kit there. The Dorman has a really nice kit that goes there. Don't forget these bolts here will be in inch pounds and the ones on the bottom are in foot pounds probably like 11 foot pounds or so you know every every one's a little bit different so it's those gm gaskets they're prone to go especially if you ran the dex cool stuff so which unfortunately i didn't know until uh, about 20,000 miles ago we weren't supposed to have that so i got rid of it there's a pinch in there but not too much so uh, that's about it guys uh, i'm gonna bore you to death with it so uh, i'll let you know how it goes all right thanks bye